Look at that sucker. Net it. Oh! Hi everyone. Thank you for joining my catch and cook video camping edition. This is where I show you how to catch a trout, but mainly focus on gutting and cleaning and preparing the trout in order to cook it on normal camping stove and using normal camping utensils and spices that you bring on every single camping trip. I'm just fishing this streamer here. Miguel just said he had added a knot in the line to put the weight above it so it wouldn't slide down to the streamer and so we can get it really deep in this fast moving current. So now we got a knot there. Now I'm just gonna tie my streamer back on. And what knot do you tie on a streamer, Miguel? This is a 1620 knot. A lot of people like the non-slip mono loop too. Well, there we go, I just put three BB split shots on. We're gonna try to run this streamer back through. Nice. the lure out of the fish's mouth and then we can start on gutting the fish. Step one is to slice up the belly of the fish in order to get the guts out and I'll show you a secret step in order to remove those guts quick and efficiently. Okay but first slice open the stomach by starting at the anus of the fish slicing up the stomach of the fish here Try not to puncture the intestines of the fish. Remember that fish belly is super thin. Point the tip of the blade towards the head of the fish and slice up and away from the guts. Trying to slice through these anus fins here are going to be the most difficult part of this process. Remember, keep your thumb and your fingers away from the knife blade as you cut up in between the two fins. Once you get past the two anal fins, the process becomes very easy. Make sure you do not cut any of the intestines inside. Also, this is a trout, so you do not need to scale the fish before you start taking the guts out. Don't worry about cutting past the pectoral fins gill area of the fish. Splay open the stomach of the fish, revealing the intestines. Now assess the situation and find where the intestine connects to the anus here and make sure to pull that out. This detaches the intestines from the rest of the fish, making it really easy to take the guts out. And along the base of the spine, we found some fish eggs. They're orange and look like little dots. Once the intestines are clear of the stomach, you'll find the swim bladder along the base of the spine here. Run your finger underneath the swim bladder to detach it from the spine. Now we're ready for the next step which is to take the head and the guts off of the fish. Grab your knife and cut up along the pectoral fins and the base of the gill plate. This will separate the head from the meat and the rest of the body. Slice up and along across the back and down the other side, removing both pectoral fins and the head. You do not have to cut through the spine. Once you have cut around the entire base of the head, and have not cut through the spine, grab the fish and yank the head backwards, away from the stomach. This will effectively snap the head 
off of the body. That way you don't dull your knife cutting through bone. Once you have ripped the head off of the body of the fish, the guts will also fall off with the head. This will have effectively gutted your fish and taken the head off at the same time. This is the heart of the fish and it is edible along with some other organs, but that's for a different video. I like to cut open the stomach or the intestine of the fish to have a better understanding of what they are eating within the last 24 hours. The diets change from day to day, so this is really important to get an actual glimpse in time of what they are currently eating. Drop a comment below on why you think this trout ate a fur cone, kind of like a pine cone, just smaller. This is incredible. It was in its stomach. It was blocking its intestines. It couldn't digest it. I have no clue why this trout would eat this cone, but it did. And here I break it open. It's obviously wood. It's cellulose. It's a pine cone or a fir cone. This is crazy. Comment below why you think this trout ate that cone. And as I cut farther into the intestine, I find another surprise, a baby trout. This makes sense. We caught this trout off of a streamer, which a streamer is imitating a baby or small fish. So that makes sense why we caught this trout and why there's other fish and pine cones in its stomach. The last step to cleaning your fish is to scrape out the kidney, which runs along the backbone as you can see here. I like to take my thumb fingernail, or you can use a knife or anything else to scrape up and along that backbone to get that kidney out. You definitely do not want to be eating this because kidneys filter all the toxins out of the body. So you want to make sure that all that black gunk is out of the fish. I discard the guts and the head back into the river. Just to make sure it's not disgusting for other people when they're swimming and recreating that there's fish guts and heads laying everywhere. There is one last step that I still like to do because this fish is so large. I cut the tail off in order for it to fit in the pan. Same th like the head, I just cut along the base of the tail here. There's no meat being wasted. And I flip the fish over and I cut along the other side and then snap the tail off. I throw this in the water too because I know crayfish and other filter feeders and other fish will eat this discarded waste that I'm throwing back into the river. So don't feel bad about it. Like I said before, make sure it's just clean and not disgusting for other people. If you're enjoying this content so far, consider subscribing. Definitely smash that like button and leave me a comment below and I will definitely comment back. Thank you. Now that the fish is cleaned, free of guts, free of the head, and free of the tail, it is time to rinse it in the river. And then rinse your fish out. This can be in the fresh stream or the lake or the tap. Um, just getting all that gut, all that leftover stuff out, making it spick and span and clean. As you can see here, I have a little bit of more work to do to make it 100% clean. But that's my fish in the end effect. Super clean, super dialed, and super easy to cook. And I am super stoked on the end result. And remember, clean off your working surface, whether that's like a log or this rock here, so other people don't have to see the fish blood and guts just laying all over the place. I cut the head and the tail off of the fish so it fits in the pan. If you have a big enough pan, leave the head, the tail on, and it's yummy, tastes like chips, and you can eat the cheeks and the eyeballs. What I like to do is get the butter up inside here. You don't have to spread it around too good because it'll just melt in there. Put some butter in the pan. Um, and then we dig for some seasonings. Salt. Garlic. Pepper. And we need some spices, some chili powder. And then we're going to lather it up. So sprinkle the salt on the outside. Make sure you lather up the inside because that's where it's going to be juicy. So I just pretty much use salt, use some pepper. Oh. 
garlic powder, Just because you think garlic powder tastes good doesn't mean you've got to put way too much on. Miguel learned that lesson once. And then put some chili, some fun chili seasoning on. And then if you, we don't have any lemons or limes. If you have lemons or limes, you can actually put them inside the fish. If you have fresh garlic, onions, put them inside the fish. We don't have that, so we're just going to cook it butter and seasonings. That's gonna taste amazing. Boom. It's gonna be fun trying to cook it all the way through. This thing's so thick. And then we'll just let that cook. Flip it, let it cook, and then I'll tell you the rest when we pull it off. So now it's just frying. Probably a low temperature so you get the inside cooked as well. Um, don't just nuke the outside as hard as you can. Cook it all the way through. So we just flipped the fish, and we'll see. You see how that's flaking apart? That's pulling apart right there? That is means it's finished cooking. Um, and you can see in here, um, I guess when I pull it on the plate, we can show you. It's oh, white right and it's flaking. And then we can poke into the back part. That looks good, man. All right, that looks like this side's done. So we're just frying the other side made it sure to slather and more butter and then just get it going try and get the temperature as low as you can sometimes it's hard on these cooking stoves but yeah we literally have it as low as we can and then i'll pull it off and show you what it looks like all right so the fish is done here i'm just gonna pull it off and put it over there the handle might be hot we're chilling hot handle all right. So I'll pick this apart and show you what it should look like inside. All right. Okay, so butter, salt, garlic, and some pepper, and then some other spicy, spicy peppers. And the fish looks like this. We fried it in butter. Um, this is what it looks like on the other side. And it was like eight minutes on one side, eight minutes on the other side, give or take, um, depending on the thickness of the fish. And I'll show you how you can tell if it's done because you don't want to eat a raw fish, right? So you see these, oh, I'll do it so the other camera can see. You can see these rib bones right here. And if that peels off, so if these rib bones peel out, then your fish is done. And the other thing is if the fish is flaky, and white and it flakes off, then it's done. Essentially, you should be able to pull the entire fish off of the skeleton without getting any bones and having no difficult. So here, watch this. I'm just gonna flake it right here and then we're gonna just pull this meat off. See how that meat slides off? Boom. And then we're gonna slide that meat off. See how that slides off and those bones stay in there? slide this off you see that it just slides off no bones this peels back no bones the entire fish just peels off the bones and that's when you know it's done check that out so you have these rib bones and then you're going to have some more bones so if you're going to fillet it you got to make sure with the trout that you get these bones right here sticking perpendicular out. So you got the rib bones and then these right here. Um, so I'm just going to peel that off. Check that out. Okay, so those those bones stayed in right there. That's okay. You got to make sure when we eat it that we don't eat those bones.
Okay, now I'm gonna show you a trick. You can also do it from both sides. You pick up the bone here and check this out. You pick this up and look how it peels off. Ooh. Ready to eat, Mom. Did you see how that just peeled out? You pick this up and look how it peels off. Ooh. Ready to eat, Mom. That's what your fish should look like. Look at that thing. Good, man. That's a good thing. Yeah, nah. These should be relatively good. Then bone bone. Piece has a pin down right there. <laughs> Thanks for watching to the end of this video. That's incredible. Not everyone does that, so props to you. And sh I want to shout out to you, and uh, thank you so much. If you have any comments, please drop them below. I will respond to 100% of these comments on this video. So make sure you go and do that. Yeah, um, if I missed anything or if you have any questions about my catch and cook, please comment that, and I'll get back to you. Uh, besides that, thank you for watching, and tune in for my next video.